Hi, and welcome to this section of the Advanced Calculus 2 Tutor. And in this section, we're going to finally culminate in what we've been trying to do with the polar equations and the polar coordinates that we've talked about the last few sections. And we're going to tackle the topic of area and length in polar coordinates. I could have titled this section Integration in Polar Coordinates, and it would mean exactly the same thing. You see, what we've been doing up till now is, first we talked about the polar coordinates and what they are and how to convert to rectangular. Then we talked about the polar functions, and we talked about what those look like and how to convert back and forth between rectangular. And I told you from the beginning that there were certain problems, usually involving circular symmetry, that uh, are really easy to solve in polar coordinates. And I think you can see why when you look at the equation of a circle being so simple, uh, uh, and, and so it lends itself to having simple functions in polar coordinates when you have that circular symmetry, okay? So this is calculus, and you're going to get to calculus at some point. We're going to do that in this section. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about basically integration in polar coordinates. And it sounds, I mean, when you tell somebody on the street, oh, I'm doing integration in polar coordinates, it sounds really complicated, really hard. It really isn't hard, okay? It's no different than integration that you've been doing before. It's just that now instead of integrating along x, you might be integrating along theta or something like this. And so you'll be using different variables. You have to really understand what you're doing because you, you need to be able to set the problem up, right? But fundamentally, it's no different than the regular integration. You're taking little slices of the function, okay, and you're adding them up. That's all you're doing. So what we're going to do first before we even get to the integrals is we're going to do a little bit of, of uh, learning about the area of a, of a section of a circle, okay? So what I'm going to tell you here without proof that if I have a circle like this, let's say, this is a circle, okay, and let's say I'm interested in the area of this pie wedge, okay, so you see it has a curved boundary here, and I've got, you know, something coming from the center, it's a pie wedge, and this, this is a distance r, because it's a radius of the circle, right, and this uh, th this angle here that, that describes the how open, how much of a pie I have is just called theta, okay, so I'm going to tell you without any proof at all, because you know I don't want to prove everything, and honestly I don't think it would add much if we did prove it. The area of this shaded piece, this entire piece right here, if we were to you know, shade it, uh, is going to be equal to 1 half r squared times theta. Okay. Well, the first thing you realize is you have r squared, so it, it does sort of look like a, an angle formula because usually uh, you have squares running around formulas with angle because you have to multiply two things together. It also depends on theta because obviously it depends how big or small this pi piece is. It's dependent upon theta. Okay? So this is the area of this pi wedge, and I'm just going to leave it right there. It's very, very important. Okay? So Next, I'm going to ask you another question. Given that that is the area of that wedge, of that pi, of that circle with the circular boundary between these two points, okay? Let me draw a different picture for you. Here is a coordinate system, x and y, okay? And let's say that on this guy right here in this quadrant, there's this, there's this function. Roughly goes like this, okay? So you see, you can represent it in polar uh, equation because as you sweep your, your uh, theta here, you're getting different values of the radius, r. That will be the distance to the origin. So you can definitely write a polar equation of this little arc right here, okay? A polar function. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to cut this guy off right here, and I'm going to say, okay, if I go up to here, and I go, let's say, over to here, Okay, then uh, this is what I'm going to call theta is equal to A. So this is the angle uh, where I start looking here. And this is theta is equal to B. And you'll see where I'm getting at here for, for, uh, in just a second. And let's say that what I would really like to do is calculate the area of this shaded piece. So you can see exactly why I did that up here. Because, uh, you know, I'm trying to draw an analogy here. This is the area of a pie wedge, which is a very beautiful, perfect shape with an exact beautiful boundary here, and that's equal to this. Well, here I want to find the, the area of another pie wedge, but the, uh, but the boundary is not a circle. It's this arbitrary shape, right? And by the way, this arbitrary shape uh, is r is a function of theta. Okay, so this curve right here is described and represented by this polar function that we've been talking about. And as you go from A to B, those are the boundaries. So as you go from A to B, that describes this shape right here. And what I want to do is I want to find the area in the middle here. Okay, So I'm going to write it down without proof, and then I'm going to talk to you about it. We're going to be able to do that right here. If I want to find the area here, okay, 
all I need to do is integrate this function that I've defined right here over these angles. Okay, So we're going to do that here and we're going to talk about it. The area of this shaded region is going to be the integral from A to B, which are my endpoints, A to B, which are angles by the way, of 1 half R squared d theta. Okay, make sure you understand this, one-half r squared d theta, okay? You see, this is the area of a pi wedge, which is a very beautiful, very, you know, uh, pristine cut little wedge with a perfect circle right here, okay? What I'm saying is that if this is the surface area of this piece, then by analogy, the surface area of an irregular piece can be done by integrating this guy, integrating what r is over d theta. So I can split this guy up into infinitesimal little quantities d theta, and I can go along there and I can add that up. So if I were to simplify this, it would be the integral of a to b of 1 half. Now r is simply a function of theta, right? So it would be function of theta squared d theta. So this right here is the one you're going to be using. If you're given a function of theta which describes this boundary, okay, then all I have to do is integrate over the angles, the endpoints A to B, and you see what I'm doing. As I start here and I integrate over, I'm sweeping out this area here. I'm adding up everything under the curve here in the same way when you're doing your rectangular integrals, you have a function uh, y is equal to f of x from a to b, and you're integrating that function over a to b, okay? It's exactly the same thing, except the function here is in terms of theta, and it sweeps out some arc here between the angles a to b. So a to b here are angles. You would have 0 to pi over 4, or 0 to 2 pi or something. You're always sweeping out in a circle when you're doing your polar integrals. It's very important to remember. You're not integrating along x like this. You're always sweeping out an area. I want you to visualize that. It'll help you, especially when you get to calculus 3. When you start here, you're sweeping out an area and you're integrating the area under that curve here. So this is really the lion's share of what you need to know for this section. We're just going to solve some problems to show you how to apply it. Okay? So let's do that right now. Let's say you have a function r is equal to theta. Okay? And the angles that you're going to be confined to is going to be between 0 and pi. Okay, so if I wanted to find, this is, this is some uh, uh, arbitrary function of theta. It, cur it sweeps out at some curve here, okay? And I'm looking from 0 to pi, so I'm sweeping out something 0 to pi, and I'm looking at the area bounded by this curve, whatever it is, and these angles, 0 to pi, okay? So we just said that the area is going to be equal to the integral from A to B, those are my uh, angles, okay, of 1 half, uh, f of theta squared d theta. Okay, that's all we said we had, so let's go ahead and do that here. It's going to be the integral from 0 to pi, okay, of 1 half f of theta. f of theta is just r, r is f of theta, so it's theta squared. Just take this theta, put it in here, theta squared d theta. Okay, now look at what you have here. You have an integral, and it looks a little bit different than the integrals you've been doing all along because you have thetas here, but think about it. This was just the same thing as 1 half x squared dx. These are dummy variables here. I mean, I can, as long as I have a theta or some function of theta and a d theta, I can integrate that and I can plug in the endpoint. So it looks different, but it's it done exactly the same. Okay. So in order to integrate this, it's going to be 1 half over exponent plus 1, which is 3, theta to the exponent plus 1, which is 3, Okay. evaluated from 0 to pi. Okay, so I'm evaluating them exactly the same way. So that's going to be 1 sixth, taking 3 over 1, flipping it over, multiplying, is going to be 1 sixth, and evaluating the inside, pi to the third minus, evaluating here, 0. So the answer is going to be pi to the third over 6. Okay, so you see it's, it's, it looks different, it looks a little bit uh, wacky, but you just take your function, you put it in, you square it, and you're integrating over d theta, where d theta is is bound by those angles right there. And what you're doing is you're sweeping out that area and you're adding up all those little slivers of area and it's giving you the answer pi cubed over 6. Okay, now the next problem is a little bit more challenging. If I were given the function r is equal to 2 cosine of theta and the angles I'm bounding myself by are between 0 and pi over 6. So I have some function. r is a function of some theta. I'm only looking at the angles between 0 and pi over 6. Pi over 6 is roughly 30 degrees, so it's really small angles there. But I'm trying to add up and find the area under there. So how would I do it? 
and do it the same way as before. An integral of a to b of one half f of theta squared d theta. Okay? So it's a simple looking integral. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Integral a to b is given right here at zero to pi over six. Okay? And then on the inside I have one half times the square of my function, which is going to be 2 cosine theta squared, which is going to be 4 cosine squared theta, d theta. So all I did was I took this, I put it in here, and I squared it, and that's what I got. Okay. So coming down here, 4 divided by 2 is 2, and that can come out of the integral, so it's going to be 2 times the integral of 0 to pi over 6 of cosine squared d theta. So all you have to do, and by the way, this is cosine squared of theta, d theta. Okay, so all you have to do is find out how to integrate that guy and you're home free. Now, by now you should be getting pretty good at your techniques of integration, but let me give you one little hint for this. There is an identity that's very, very, very helpful when you're integrating this. It's a trig identity. You learned it way back when. Uh, basically, it says cosine squared of theta is equal to 1 plus cosine 2 theta over 2. So this is the same thing as saying 1 half, this is the form you'll see in the textbooks, plus 1 half cosine 2 theta. Okay. Now, if I were to take this and put it in here, I can integrate that, because I can integrate this 1 half and I can integrate this cosine pretty easily, so I'm going to do that next. I'm going to go ahead and continue with my red theme here, and I'm going to say it's going to equal 2 times the integral 0 to pi by 6, and I'm going to plug in what I have here, 1 half plus one-half cosine two theta, d theta, okay? d theta. All right, so what I'm going to do next is you see I have a one-half and a one-half. I'm going to factor that one-half out, okay, and I'm going to yank it out of the integral. So I can take that common one-half out, okay? So I'm going to have two times one-half times the integral, zero to pi by six, one plus cosine two theta d Theta. Make sure you understand this. I just took out the one half, so it's one half parentheses, one plus cosine two theta on the inside, but then I take the one half and I yank it out here. Okay? And you can see why I did that right away, because it gets rid of everything on the outside. So really and truly, all I have to do is integrate this, which is one plus cosine of two theta. Now, what I like to do literally on my paper when, I, when I'm confronted like this by an integral like this, I literally put a little curly brace down here and say, okay, now I'm going to work with this one, only this one. Integral 0 to pi by 6 of 1 d theta. Okay? What's that going to be equal to? Okay? That's going to be equal to, just integrating 1, is theta evaluated from 0 to pi by 6. Okay? And that's going to equal, plugging in the top value, pi by 6, minus plugging in the bottom value of 0. So that's going to equal pi by 6. This value here is only this first part, okay? I haven't done anything at all with the second part. And I like to do them separately because if you start trying to integrate everything at once, you're probably going to make a mistake somewhere, and, and it's just not as clear where that mistake came from. So I just like to do it this way. Now, integrating this guy, I draw a little curly brace and say, okay, now I'm going to deal with him. The integral of 0 to pi by 6 of cosine 2 theta d theta. Now, you might have a table of integrals that you like to use that, that you know the answer to this guy right here, but if you don't, every single time I do one of these things, I do my substitution. Because what I want, if I, if I can turn this into cosine of u, well, then I know how to integrate that, but this 2 theta here is, you know, screws you up, so you want to make sure and get rid of that. So I say u is equal to 2 theta, because I'm going to end up at wanting cosine u in the middle. du d theta is equal to 2, just taking the derivative with respect to theta. I'm just doing a regular substitution here. And then d theta, because I'm going to need that to plug in here, is going to equal 1 half times du. Okay, 1 half times du. Now let's go ahead and do our, do our substitution. 0 to pi by 6, okay, of cosine of u, because u is 2 theta, times d theta, which is just times 1 half du. So now it's very simple because the answer is going to be 1 half, taking out the 1 half outside the integral. Now what is the integral of cosine? The integral of cosine, you should remember, is sine 
of u, and I now have to evaluate from 0 to pi by 6. But don't forget, these limits of integration are in terms of theta. My integral is still in terms of u, so I don't want to evaluate them yet. I'm just writing it there so I remember. So it's 1 half times the sine of u. u is equal to 2 theta evaluated from 0 to pi by 6. 0 to pi by 6. Okay? And what's this going to be equal to? Let's go ahead and move over to the other side of the board. What I had from down there for that little integral is 1 half times sine 2 theta evaluated 0 to pi by 6. That's what I was trying to do. Let's go ahead and do it. 1 half, let me evaluate the top, sine of 2 times pi over 6 okay minus sine of 0 plugged in here is still going to be sine of 0 okay so it's 1 half and on the inside it's going to be sine of pi over 3 just making this division here minus sine of 0 is 0 okay and what this is going to equal here is 1 half and the sine of pi over 3 is like the sine of 60 degrees so it's the square root of 3 over 2. Square root of 3 over 2, and obviously that's going to be square root of 3 over 4. Okay, square root of 3 over 4. So, what I had from the other little integral back here, which remember, I'm just trying to integrate this guy right here. This part of it came out to pi over 6. The other part of it over here came out to square root of 3 over 4. So, the total answer is going to be pi over 6 plus the square root of 3 over 4 pi over 6 plus the square root of 3 over 4. So I was given a polar function. I put it into the relation that I know is going to sweep out that guy, and I'm adding up the area, and I'm getting the area under that entire curve. Okay? And I square it, and I bring it here. I factor some stuff out, and I end up with this cosine, and I need to integrate that. And if you're not going to use a table of integrals, I just use this identity right here, plug it back in, and end up splitting it into two integrals. The first one's very, very simple. The second one's also pretty simple. You just use a quick uh, substitution there, and plug in your limits of integration to each integral separately, get the answers, and then you finally add them up over here at the end. Just make sure you keep your sign straight uh, through the whole process. Okay, now the next one we're going to do is going to be r is equal to 5 times the sine of theta. That's the function, the polar function that I want to integrate there. And I want to find the area enclosed by that. That's how the problem is stated. Find the area enclosed by this function. Usually that means you want to go ahead and integrate all the way around 2 pi to see what the area of this function actually encloses. Okay, So the area, don't forget, is equal to the integral from a to b of 1 half f of theta squared d theta. And in our case, since we're going all the way around the circle because we're trying to find the entire area enclosed, it'll be 0 to 2 pi. That goes all the way around the circle of 1 half times this function squared. 5 squared is 25 sine squared of theta d theta. Okay? Sine squared of theta d theta. Okay? So what I'm going to have in the end is I'm going to have 25 over 2 come out of the integral, integral 0 to 2 pi of sine squared theta d theta. Same thing here as the last time. Either you have a table of integrals or just memorize that, uh, which is going to be fairly unlikely, or you just go ahead and use the identity uh, that you may or may not remember. The identity is sine squared of theta is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over 2. And that's going to be equal to 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta. Just basically splitting that fraction up right there. Okay, so now, again, if I were to plug this in, I can integrate this. I can integrate the 1 half. I can integrate the cosine. There's nothing fancy about that, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to switch colors here. 25 over 2, integral 0 to 2 pi. Now just take this thing from this uh, trig identity and put it in here. 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2 theta, d theta, okay? d theta. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. I have a common one-half factor. I'm going to factor it out of here, and I'm going to yank it outside the integral. So I'm going to have 25 over 2 times one-half, okay? And on the inside, I'm going to be left with 0 to 2 pi of 1 minus cosine 2 theta, d theta, okay? Now, just make sure you understand that. I factored out the one-half, 
So it would be one minus cosine two theta on the inside, but then I took that one half out and it just became here, okay? So what I'm going to have in the end, just to make sure it's totally clear, 25 over four integral zero to two pi, one minus cosine two theta d theta, okay? So I have this integral and I can do both parts of it. This is just the integration of that constant one. And the other guy is just integration of the cosine two theta. Okay, so let me switch colors again and say literally I'm going to I'm going to work with uh, this guy first. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say this first part is going to equal 25 over four times the integral zero to two pi of one d theta. Notice I'm carrying the uh, coefficient on the outside with me just because I don't want to forget it. Uh, I don't want to forget to multiply by that later on, okay? So this is going to equal 25 over 4, okay? What's the integral of 1? Well, it's simply theta evaluated at our limits, 0 to 2 pi. So this is going to be 25 over 4 times 2 pi minus 0. Just the limits of integration plugged into here, okay? And that's going to equal uh, 25 over 4 Okay, and actually what it's going to equal, let's go ahead and make it simple on ourselves here. This guy is going to cancel with this, leaving me 2. So on the bottom, it's going to be 25 over 2 times pi. That's what that one's going to be equal, 25 pi over 2. So that's part of it. That is the solution to this integral, also including the coefficient. Now, let's make sure we don't, we don't hose ourselves up here. Let's go ahead and do the other part. We're going to go over here, but we're going to make sure, and we're going to carry this over here with us, 25 over 4 times the integral 0 to 2 pi of negative cosine 2 theta d theta. Okay? d theta. So we're, we carry the coefficient out here and we carry the coefficient over here to these integrals and what we're going to do is we're going to get the solution to that integral, add it to this one, uh, and we're going to be done. Okay? We're going to be done. So what do we do next? We're going to use substitution here. Okay, we're going to use substitution here because that is what we need to do. We're going to say u is equal to 2 theta. We're going to plug it in here. We're going to get an integral in terms of cosine u. And then we're going to, we know what the integral of cosine is. And we're just going to make sure we have all our constants right and go from there. So u is equal to 2 theta. Okay. Uh, du dx is equal to 2. Actually, it's du d theta because my variable is theta is equal to 2. So then d theta which is what I'm going to need to plug in here, is going to equal one-half times du. Okay? So let's go ahead and rewrite the integral in terms of u. Let me take this negative sign out. So it's negative 25 over 4 times the integral 0 to 2 pi of cosine u times d theta. What we just found that was one-half du. Okay? Now let me continue up on the other side of the board here. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this one half and I'm going to pull it out and then we're going to integrate this cosine. Let me write what I have again, negative 25 over 4 integral 0 to 2 pi of cosine u times one half du. Okay, let's continue our simplification. We're going to take this one half out. It's going to be negative 25 over 4 integral 0 to 2 pi cosine of u du. Now you know how to integrate the cosine. Integral of cosine is just simply sine. So that's going to be equal to negative 25 over 4. Integral of cosine is sine of u evaluated at our limit 0 to 2 pi. Now again our limits are in terms of theta but our integrals in terms of u so we need to go ahead and replace what we know u is. Negative 25 over 4 times the sine and what was u equal? We go all the way back down here. u was equal to 2 theta so we put 2 theta in here, and we evaluate that from 0 to 2 pi. And now we're finally actually ready to do the evaluation. 25 over 4. The top limit is 2 pi, so it's sine of 2 times 2 pi is 4 pi minus sine of 2 times 0 is still 0, so it's sine of 0. Okay. Negative 25 over 4. What do I have on the inside? Sine of 4 pi. That's going to be all the way around back to the, or, back to the uh, uh, x axis again. Sine of that is 0. Sine of 0 is 0. So you get a big fat 0 here. 
0 minus 0 is 0, multiply, you get 0. So this integral, this whole thing we've been spending time on, really doesn't contribute to anything at all. So moving back over here, the actual answer is this whole thing right here. This is the answer, because remember, this is the integral we were trying to solve. This was this piece of it. We integrated this and got 0. So the actual answer is 25 pi over 2. Let's go ahead and review. We had a function here in terms of theta. We squared it, put it into the uh, equation here. We're sweeping out the area and we're integrating from 0 to 2 pi all the way around. Okay, And once we do the simplification, we had a sine squared. We used the identity here. We factored out 1 half, yanked it out. And on the inside, we had this 1 minus cosine 2u. We integrated this part of it and got this making sure we carried through our multiplication of our constant here. And then over here we integrated this piece, we got zero so it didn't contribute at all, so the final answer was 25 pi over 2. Now just a minute ago we were working problems that dealt with finding the area that is sweeping out, that a function, a polar function is sweeping out, and we're looking at the boundaries, uh, the, the boundaries and the angles there, and we're looking at the area of that function uh, over there towards the origin. So it's basically doing an integration in in polar coordinates, that's what we're doing. Next, we're going to do a brief uh, explanation of how to find the arc length in polar coordinates, and we're going to do a problem related to that. So, recall that for rectangular coordinates, the length, the arc length, is equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus uh, dy dx squared. Uh, dx. This is the arc length when you have a function y uh, is, is a function of x. Function, basically y is a function of x. You take the derivative, you square it, stick it under here, and that's in rectangular coordinates. Now, I'm not really going to prove this because I don't think it's really um, worth it, to be honest with you. But in polar coordinates, the arc length is the integral of a uh, over a to b. a and b here are the angles, okay? And I'm integrating r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta. So you see it looks similar. You've got the derivative of the function. Remember, it's r is a function of theta. You have the derivative squared here, but instead of a 1, you have an r squared. Beyond that, the thing is exactly the same. So here, the way you would do this here is if you had some function, and this was the endpoint uh, a, theta is equal to a, and this is the endpoint b, theta is equal to b, so these are angles here. If I wanted to find the, the, uh, the uh, length of that thing, then I would do this integration. I'd plug in the function, square it, take the derivative, square it, stick it under the integral, integrate between these angles, and that would be the arc length. I'm not going to prove it to you. Uh, you could do it. You could, you could split this guy up into segments and do all of that math and find out that it's very similar to the rectangular version. I'm just going to leave it to your imagination to see that these are very similar, and so it kind of makes sense that it looks like that. Let's go ahead and do a problem, and we will get the hang of how to use this guy, okay? What if you were given the equation, the polar equation, r is equal to 5 times cosine of theta, okay? And the angles that we're interested in is between 0 and 3 pi over 4. 0 and 3 pi over 4, okay? So I want to find the arc length. So I have a polar function that's going to trace out something. I'm looking at the angles between 0, actually 0 is the axis here, 0 and 3 pi over 4, which is way over here, 3 pi over 4. So I'm looking at that arc length there. How would I do it? The length is equal to the integral from a to b, which are just these angles, okay? Square root r squared plus dr d theta squared d theta, okay? So the next thing we need to do really to use this, we need to find dr d theta, okay? What would that be equal to? We haven't even really talked about finding derivatives of these things too much yet, but it's basically what you would think. dr d theta, taking the derivative of this, is equal to 5 times, what's the derivative of cosine? It's negative sine of theta, okay? So dr d theta is equal to negative 5 sine of theta. Okay, but I need the square, so dr d theta squared is equal to, squaring this, negative 5 times negative 5 is 25 sine squared theta. 25 sine squared theta. Now I'm ready to go ahead and plug it into my relation. So the length is going to be the integral, of a to b, so 0 to 3 pi by 4 of square root r squared. So I've got to square my function, 25 cosine squared 
theta, I've just squared this function, r, plus the derivative squared, and I just found that here, 25 times the sine squared of theta, iterating over d theta. This can be written as follows, 0 to 3 pi by 4. <coughs> now, underneath the radical, I can factor out a 25, just pull out a 25 that's common, and I'm going to have cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta, <coughs> and it's going to be d theta. <coughs> now, this is a product under a radical, so I can take the square root of that 25 and I can pull it out of the integral, so it's going to be 5 times the integral, 0 to 3 pi by 4. Now look at here. Cosine squared plus sine squared, that should look familiar to you, okay? That's always going to be equal to 1 because that's, a, that's an identity. Cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So what I'm going to have left under here is the square root of 1, okay? d theta. So suddenly this integral got super simple. 5 times the integral, 0, 3 pi by 4 of d theta, okay? That's going to equal 5, taking the integral of the inside, theta from 0 to 3 pi by 4 which is going to be 5, plugging in at the top, 3 pi by 4, minus, evaluating at the bottom, which is 0. So finally, 5 times 3 is 15 pi divided by 4. And that is the final answer, 15 pi divided by 4. So going back up to the top, if you had a function here, 5 cosine theta, it's just some function that's described by this polar uh, function right here and it's some arbitrary shape and I'm going to be looking between the angles of 0 and 3 pi over 4 and I want to find the length of that guy. I square the function, put it in here, take the derivative, square him and put him in here and when I did that I noticed right away I had a cosine squared plus a sine squared, backed it off to 25, pulled him outside of the integral by taking the square root and pulling him out. This thing reduced to 1 so my integral became very simple I just plugged in the limits of integration. So, in this section, we've done something very important. We've talked about the uh, uh, integrals in polar coordinates, which is basically how to find the area of curves that are defined by polar coordinates. We've also talked about how to find the area of the length of an arc in polar coordinates, which is a very similar procedure to what we've done before. The formula looks almost exactly the same, so hopefully you won't have too much trouble memorizing it. But basically, you just use those guys, and you bang through the math, check your steps, every step along the way to make sure that they're right and take it one step at a time and this is very analogous to what we've done before it's very useful you'll be using it and I think with practice you'll get the hang of it